I've had a few people who have done their visa applications, whether it's coming to the UK for work or whether it's going to the US for studies, whether it's going to live with a fiance somewhere else. You know, like we keep them to outside the country and you want to go stay with them. Like you know, you visa. You say, "Masa sa izi ni ni ni." Eh? Wa Kenya i Kenya ito itaki tu amoke. See, you know, I have <laughs> the <laughs> the Kenyan thing. See, you know. Ah, wait, wait. See, you like the video. Come how would you like? And see, you subscribe. Ni 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 sasa. Hey, hi, loves. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, karibu sana sana and you know, if you have been here before, thank you for sticking around. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Louis Bikeri. Yes. <laughs> the OG herself. It's summer, it's beautiful outside. Yeah. I don't know if I can rotate my camera for you guys to see the fields. Everything is looking so amazing. But anyways, let's get into work. So from my last vlog, I was actually explaining to you guys how much it cost me for my course in the UK, yeah? But I gave you the exact figure of how much I paid for my tuition fees. And for those of you who have been wondering like, Louis, how did you raise all that money? Or like, how can I, like, ebuni abie ulifanya jata mimi nifanya the same? I think I have a few friends who may be watching my vlogs who knew how stranded I was uh, a while back. And then they got surprised when I told them, yay, I'm done with uni. <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of like a trick that works for one person may not actually work for you. But I'm going to say this, you need to build um, the flow of cash into your accounts. And those bank accounts should not be sitting idle. Do one thing. Ata ukijua you get like a um, thousand shillings a month, ama a week, ama unacheza chama, you take that money, deposit pale kwa bank, and then you can withdraw it later. You know, like when you deposit and withdraw, it shows like this person is active, there is money coming in and going out of the account. So that's like making your account active in such a way that when you will want to take a loan, it's going to be easy to prove that, hey, I'm a person who has flow of money in my account. That is one trick I used. But anyway, today, let's talk about visa application. Wee! <laughs> visa application is one thing that um, really gives a lot of people a challenge. You see, I've had a few people who have done their visa applications, whether it's coming to the UK for work or whether it's going to the US for studies, whether it's, uh, you know, going to live with a fiancé somewhere else. You know, like, we keep them to outside the country and you want to go stay with them. Like, you know, you visa. You say, what is this? You know, you Kenya to Kenya and you say, what is It's the instructions you're not following. You're not following the right rules. But today, I'm not here to talk about the people who are looking for visas to go out of the country for work or to go and be with their fiancés. You can do that another time. We can have that talk another time. So today I'm here to talk about student visa applications, okay? I know a few students who applied for their visas and they got rejected. Oh my God. Can you imagine that? And you know one thing I said, the whole process of visa application needs some money. It needs some good amount of money. And once you put all that together and you do all the processes and then your visa is declined, that can be frustrating because nobody actually gives you back the money that you used in the process of visa application. So I don't want you to lose uh, yourself in this process because Kunawatu may apply Maramoja Mbili and then the visas has been rejected, alafu wa me give up. Usi give up, just stay with me and I will <laughs> tell you how this is going. Or oh, the things you need to put together for your visa application. The first thing is a current passport. You know, you're a Kenyan citizen. Make sure you have a current Kenyan passport. 
And if you are from Tanzania, if you are from Zimbabwe, Nigeria, South Africa, <laughs> make sure you have a valid passport for your country. So that is uh, like one place to begin at. And secondly, I was also trying to like guide you guys. Um, that is like the course you're interested in and applying the last time we were, we were having this discussion. So for you to apply for a visa, you need to have a confirmation letter, an acceptance letter from the university you're going to, okay? So that is like in it was CAS, uh, a confirmation of acceptance of studies from the university you're going to, okay? So that letter has got a certain code that you input uh, during your visa application, pale kwa computer. <laughs> yeah, so without that confirmation letter, it will be like you're going to get stranded, like probably in the streets or wherever. So they need to have the evidence that, yes, this person has been accepted and this is the evidence, yeah? The confirmation letter from the university uh, you're going to. And the third thing is you need to prove that you have enough money to support yourself <laughs> okay to avoid you coming all the way from your home country to get here and start being uh, homeless or going around asking for help they don't want to have that situation so you need to prove that you can actually uh, support yourself and pay for your tuition fees so this proof of money the proof of money is what denies a lot of people their visas because one thing the UK for instance is very very expensive like the living cost in the UK is crazy but as much as it's crazy the people who are here like uh, the minimum wage is also friendly to support the mode of living here but when you're coming from another country it is a whole culture shock let me tell you so, kitu ya kwanza, it is that you, you have proof of money that you can pay for your tuition fees, okay? The other thing is that you can support yourself, that is the living cost. So, unaweza kulipa rent, you can buy food, na unaweza commute from one place to another, ama from home to uni and stuff like that. So, that normally brings around a huge figure that, um, or than what you may expect so now like for people who uh, want to study for instance within london uh, the living cost is a bit expensive compared to when you want to study outside london so that it's like for me my tuition fees yenyewe ilikuwa 2.7 million but sasa pia, you need to prove that unaweza lipa rent, unaweza afford food, unaweza afford transportation around for one full year. So that brought me, for my, my, my statements zilikuwa zinaonyesha, I have um, a cumulative of 5 million Kenya shillings in my account. You know, when you have that, it's actually easy for someone to say like, ah, this person can support themselves, you know. <laughs> Yeah, so that is one thing uh, that uh, kind of makes people's applications to be rejected. So watch that out. Number four, you actually need a TB test. Yeah, that one is mandatory. And I was actually surprised that within East Africa, kind of like there is one center where you can get a TB test, which is awkward. You know, it, it doesn't make sense because the people within Kenya travel all the way to Nairobi, Pale Westlands, and the people in Tanzania still travel all the way to Nairobi. The people in Uganda, wanakuja water Nairobi to get that TB test. And by the time I was doing mine, I think it was around 14,000 Kenya shillings. I don't know if it has changed, if it has increased or low. Okay, obviously not lowered with the, with the way the economy is going now. Mm -mm. I think you should check if it has increased. So uh, a TB test is a must. I, I forgot, I'm seated outside. So I, I still have my TB certificate. The thing is that TB uh, test, you, you go get it done and you're given 
instantly so that you can go away with it. Number five is an ATAS or IELTS. That is like the certificate to show that your English is good enough. Yeah? You're coming to study. If you're coming to study and you can't understand English, the UK, they speak English. This is Britain. Hmm? Everything is taught in English. If you don't understand in English, how are you going to communicate? How are you going to write? How are you going to do anything? So for me, I never needed an, um, an English proficiency proof to come here because, ha, duh, can you listen to me? <laughs> yeah, but we have uh, a lot of universities that normally require students to provide proof to show that you can actually communicate and comprehend English, okay? So if, if you, the school you're applying to requires you to have that certificate, you will have to take a short course to get that certificate, okay? But sometimes, I know if you're Kenyan, obviously you can communicate in English way better because we study, we study everything in English. I know Swahili is our national language, but Swahili is like, we study Swahili as a subject in class. So I don't think you should be having a problem or stressing yourself to apply to universities that need you to provide an English uh, certificate. Yeah. Angalia two options, the options that allow you to just, you know, come through. You need a written consent for your application if you have someone sponsoring your education or your tuition fees. So if you have someone like an individual who has uh, agreed to sponsor your studies, make sure they write a letter saying, I'm so and so, I come from this. Sometimes they may, even, they may even be needed to like provide their address and a lot of other things to actually say, yes, I'm the person who is sponsoring this applicant to come to the UK to study. I am liable for their tuition fees. So once the immigration center sees that letter, they know there's someone obligated uh, for you. To like pay your tuition fees in the UK so you won't be stranded you know like the big thing I'm underlining there is stranded in a, in a foreign country even the immigration officers don't want that so if it is an individual sponsoring your tuition fees they will have to, to write you a letter to prove that yes I will be liable for this person's tuition fees and if it is an institution that has agreed to sponsor your studies they will still need to write you a letter so that you attach with your all these documents we are talking about when you are applying for your visa. This is very important because when an immigration officer looks at your application and then akaona umepungukiwa hata kama na 100k from what they normally need, oh, pff, they reject your application until you can prove that you have enough money. By the way, that is one thing that normally uh, denies a lot of people visas and so after getting all those things together together <laughs> oh and by the way it's not just bank statements that can prove that you have enough money in Kenya we have M-Pesa if your M-Pesa services or your M-Pesa statements show that you have good flow of money you can print your bank statement and at the same time you print your M-Pesa statement as a supporting document to show that you have enough money to finance yourself uh, wherever you're going. You need to fill in a, a visa application form that you get on the visa application website. So here you'll be filling all your information. Please do not lie. Please do not lie. And like I said, make sure your names are matching from your passport to your ID, to the names you're filling out in that form because whenever they see any alteration or anything altered, that is an X. It's like you're pretending to be someone else and apart from the names, it is the dates of birth. Like, you know, we have people who want to be younger than they actually are. It's like, what, who are you lying to? Stop being 28 and you want to be uh, 20 in documents <laughs> in a way that your face and your age don't match. <laughs> We're in the 21st century where 
people are identifying as anything they want. Yeah? <laughs> now, I think people are identifying with age. Someone looks like 40 and they say, I identify as 20 years old. I identify as 16. <laughs> no, jokes aside, do not lie about your age. Just make sure you have all the information telling everything to be uniform everything should match during your application okay so make sure some small mistakes are not costing you uh, a visa because i want you to win i want you to come out here and see the world i want you to come here and make money i want you to come here and build a career i want you to get out of where you are and go make your own table in this channel i said we are growing together we are inspiring each other and oh my goodness we are winning we are winning together <laughs> so i'm gonna insert this in here pretty fast uh, before i take you back outside because i felt this was important um, so the visa application fees i'm talking about this because we have already put together all the documents we need and you know now we want to pay and submit our applications you know so the application fees for the uk to be specific is 363 pounds and when i try to convert that as of now it's around 62,000 kenya shillings so you know for me when i was doing my payment i think i did like 51,000. But now inflation and everything, the prices are going up. And another thing that you will need to pay for uh, before submitting your visa, that is like when you start doing the online payments, you're going to need to pay for the health surcharge. So in the UK, you don't pay to go to the hospital, okay? Like you have medical insurance. So the health surcharge is like, your medical insurance for when you will be in the UK. So as a master's student, course runs for one year, that's for international students, and you get to pay your health surcharge to run for a whole year, okay? You're given one year for study and a few months extra, like one or two for you to like maybe find a job or look around and a lot of other things so that comes to approximately 705 pounds for the health surcharge when i convert that as of the moment it's around 120 kenya shillings okay um that is if you are applying alone you know like when i've been saying that you need to check if you have the right like you have the right kind of visa for instance we have these people who are doing their applications alone. Like I did my application alone and I came to the UK alone. But we have those people who want to go study and come with their partners. So a partner can be, you know, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, uh, sometimes your unmarried partner, like you live together or you have a life together, but you're not married. That is still valid as a partner or your married partner. And some of these things, of course, you'll need to provide proof. Like if, you're, if you say you're married, you'll need like a civil certificate or whatever. But even if you say this is my girlfriend or this is my boyfriend, of course, they're allowed to come with you during your time of study. But now when we are talking about the health surcharge during this application, because you have to apply for them as well, but they will be dependent on you. So they get to apply for a dependent visa, okay? You get a student visa, but your partner gets a dependent visa. So they come to the country under you, okay? And th this can also like be apparent. If, if a person planning to come and study in the UK is under uh, 18, so a parent can accompany you for the duration of study or a guardian. <laughs> It's, it's a long story, but once you have the right information, you can definitely survive. You can make it. So 
uh, if you are coming with one dependent, that's now, let, let me say, for example, you want to come to the UK with your girlfriend or your boyfriend, that is one partner, they'll have to pay the same amount of health surcharge as you. And if you, if you guys, if you guys have kids already, like you have a family and you have kids, the kids can be wavered. They can pay less than what you guys are paying. So I need you to also do some research on that because voila, I'm just here to point you to the right direction. So one thing about the UK at the moment is that in the previous years, they have been uh, allowing uh, students coming to study to come over with their partners. And people have taken advantage of that and immigrated here. <laughs> I don't know the best way to put it across, but that's what is happening because we finish our studies. You want to stay. I wanted to stay. I'm here. So if someone finished their studies and they still wanted to stay here with their partners that they came with, you can do that. But now the UK has been in parliament debating what are we going to do? We have a lot of people coming over. <laughs> And as of 2023, uh, the September intakes, you have to be careful. There is not going to be dependent visas offered in the UK. So you can have that in other places, in Australia, in the US, wherever. They don't mind. But the UK, they mind now. So check that out and make sure that you're not messing up or you're not getting messed up. So let's go back outside. So during application, this is what I was surprised because I did my application in the immigration offices in Mombasa, Kenya. And we still have other immigration centers like Nairobi is the most common. But if you go to Mombasa, honestly, there is no queue. If you are within Mombasa, that is going to be so easy for you. It's like when I got in there, it was like, is this someone's compound? <laughs> I was so confused, but no. It's like a visa application center. So what you go to do in a visa application center is to submit your biometrics. Biometrics ni fingerprints. Because easy fingerprints, Zeto, they are very unique. You cannot share your fingerprints with anyone. So they take your fingerprints. Is on the one biometrics, okay? And secondly, they take um, passport photos of you, okay? Because when when someone is told like oh you need to pro provide a current passport photo someone goes to the gallery and takes a photo from three years or three months ago and then when you're going <laughs> to travel ah, no this can't be the same person <laughs> so when you go to an, a visa application center because you've come with all your things, your passport and everything, they still take a photo of you while you are there. So those things need to be a close match, kind of. We see Chapesa now is the kakua tofauti when you're the same person. <laughs> this kind of questions, unajibu smart. You say, after my studies, I intend on coming back home so that ni apply my knowledge Hapa, hapa. If you dare say, pale, ni, 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 nobody's going to give you a visa, my friend. One thing I realized is uh, when we are doing these visa applications, they don't even get processed in Kenya. I was surprised that our visas are processed in South Africa. Can you imagine that? So you submit everything. When someone tells you, uh, letter kitu kidogo, no. Well, please, if you've loved this video, kindly like it, share. There's a friend who wants to see this video, please share and leave me a comment. I'm still saying those people who are still inboxing me about very, very hot questions, please leave them in the comment section. If I answer your question, someone else will get an answer to you. I'm not going to answer anything privately off my YouTube channel. So it's evening and the weather is looking amazing. Oh, mwah, mwah, the weather is amazing. 
And I hope this video brings a smile on your face and gives you hope that whatever you're trying to do is actually possible. And I want you to go out there. <laughs> Chase those dreams. And one day when you're, when you're done chasing, leave the dream. <laughs>